What do you do with all your old CDs that you still have from the 90s? Well, turn them into an overly complex system to play music on Spotify, of course. Oh, and then try to impress Mark Rober in the process. I'll show you how I did it right now. Welcome to Make Your Play. If you're new here, I'm Michael, and I enjoy building all kinds of things and sharing them with you. My passion is programming, but since I also enjoy woodworking and building electronics, I try to combine all three of these into my maker projects. I also share CNC, 3D printing, and workshop improvement videos as well. If you are a fellow maker or want to become a maker, I would love to have you as part of the Maker at Play community. For my latest project, I wanted to find a clever way to use my old CDs that are just collecting dust because today I listen to all my music via Spotify. The majority of my CD collection is from the 90s, which includes includes my college my legs. I have no legs. So what album or song reminds you of the 90s? Mine is in the comments below. Add yours by sharing a Spotify link so we can all listen to it. Keep watching to learn how Spotify links play an important role in this project. If you're too young to remember the 90s, I'm guessing you might not even know what a CD is. So feel free to leave a sarcastic comment to remind me how old I am. So what is the magic inside this little box that makes it work? NFC. NFC or near field communications has become very common in our lives. It can be found in badges used to open doors. Smartphones have built in support for NFC as well, which allows for things like Apple Pay and Google Pay. Basically, NFC is the technology that allows two electronic devices to exchange a small amount of data when they are within about four centimeters of each other. There are five major components to this project. Amazon Echo Dot, an ESP32 microcontroller, an NFC reader, a NFC sticker, and finally the Spotify APIs. In my project, the NFC reader and the NFC sticker are the two electronic devices that will exchange data. And exactly what data do they exchange? The link that Spotify provides to allow music to be shared with friends on social media. Every song, album, artist, or playlist in Spotify has a unique link that can be shared. I take the link for a given album and write it into the memory of an NFC sticker and place that sticker onto the CD. Okay, now the CD can share the Spotify link, but how do we read and use it? This is where we need the NFC reader and microcontroller. The NFC reader receives the Spotify link from the NFC sticker when they are near each other. The reader then passes the link to the microcontroller, which tells the Spotify API to play the music. But we don't just say, hey, Spotify, play this. We tell Spotify exactly what device to play it on. Have you ever used the feature that allows you to tell Spotify to play on another device, like on one of the smart speakers in your home? Well, the Spotify API allows us to do the same thing when the microcontroller tells Spotify to play the music. It also tells Spotify exactly what device to play on in order to create the illusion that the Echo Dot is connected to the NFC reader. Now, if you're super nerdy like me and wanna see the source code that makes this all happen, watch this video that walks through the source code running on the microcontroller and includes links to the code on GitHub. All of my program videos are posted on Code Life, my other YouTube channel. I basically built a system that allows me to put a hyperlink on a CD case and a method to click that link when I place a CD on this magical box. Well, okay, maybe the electronics are magical, but that cardboard box isn't, so let's fix that with a trip into my workshop. I've become a big fan of using Walnut in all my projects since using it for my subscriber count display and on air sign. I used Walnut for the sides and Bird's Eye Maple for the front. I start by rough cutting a piece of each and then milling the pieces flat and square on my joiner and planer. I resaw the maple in half in order to glue up two pieces for the front as my maple board was just about a half inch too narrow for this project. A key part of the aesthetics for this project is to make it look like a speaker box. And to achieve this look, I wanted a clean tight fit between the Echo Dot and the faceplate. I used my CNC to cut the circle on the faceplate that holds the Echo Dot in place. Okay, here's a moment of truth. Oh, it's too small. Yep, my conservative first cut left the hole one and a half millimeters too small which is better than making it too big and having to start all over. So I put it back on the CNC and cut the circle a second time. Look at that, that is perfect. Having the Echo Dot fit into the faceplate this well was so satisfying. It was the most satisfying part of the project until I got to the magnets. The magnets turned out really cool. You don't want to miss that part, so stick around. Hiding the NFC reader and the wood support for the CDs when they sit on top of the box was an interesting challenge. The circle that was left over from the faceplate seemed like an interesting choice to use for this piece, but how could I hollow it out so the NFC reader could fit inside it? The simplest way I could think of was to cut it in half, route a pocket in it, and then glue it back together. So that's what I did. To completely hide the NFC reader, I needed to cut a precise slot in the top of the box that would perfectly align to the pocket I created in the CD support piece. Time to glue the box together. I went with edge grain 
ingrain butt joints for the box, knowing that the ingrain at the front of the box will be fully covered by the faceplate. This provides a gorgeous horizontal grain for the side and completely hides the joint lines. I used a roundover bit in my router table to soften all the edges of the box. It amazes me how a small roundover can make such a big difference to the look of a project. Before softening the edges, I was thinking the box looked kind of meh, but after this step, it transformed to looking awesome. The final detail was some legs for the box that I cut on the CNC that raised the box up off the table and gave it a nice angled appearance. And now that moment I look forward to in all my woodworking projects. That moment when the dull blend walnut reveals its nice rich grain as I apply the spray lacquer. I decided to use magnets to hold the faceplate onto the box. This would allow the front to go on and off easily to allow access to the echo dot. I used three millimeter round magnets in each of the corners of the box with a matching magnet on the faceplate. The key here is to make sure you glue the magnets in with their polarity in the correct direction so that magnets will attract each other. And as hard as I tried, I still glued one of mine in the wrong direction. But once they were all glued in correctly, it is so satisfying to see and hear that faceplate just snap into place. Now we have the magical case to match the magical electronics. Oh, and the YouTube algorithm thinks you would like one of these videos next, so click on one and see if it was right.